Living Seed Media brings to you God's Word, which is His comprehensive equipment for changing lives. May the Lord impact your heart as you encounter His Word. For further inquiry or counsel, contact Peace House, P.O. Box 971, Boko, Benue State, Nigeria. Telephone numbers 0703 036359 0808 5150 610 Email address lsmedia at or visit our website at www.livingseed.org Let us sit back and listen as the servant of God brings forth the word of life. Our dear Father, we want to thank you because you are ever ready to help us if we open up unto you. As many as seek you, they find you. Lord, we are seeking your presence, your help this morning. We plead, Lord, you will come in our midst and you will do us good in Jesus' name. We want to listen to your word. We don't know what to have for us. But you know each and every one of us at the point of our needs. We are praying and insisting. No woman that has come to this meeting will go back the same in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, we know you are interested in us. And there is something you want to make out of us. We are pleading, Lord, do not leave us until you are finished dealing with us. In the name of Jesus. Lord, we pray that you break through us. Several of us are very stubborn. Stubborn. We are so slippery. When you touch us here, we'll dodge. When we hold us here, we'll dodge. We are praying, Lord, today and throughout this meeting. No woman will dodge out of your hand. You will hold us with your strong hand. In the name of Jesus, give us a heart to receive your word. Lord, where we need rebook, rebook us. Where we need, oh God, encouragement, please encourage us. Where we need help, please help us. Thank you, Father, for we pray in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. The theme of our meeting is written boldly here, woman a useful vessel in God's hand. Praise the Lord. We want to beg God to help us and make this team a reality in our lives in the mighty name of Jesus. We say woman, a useful vessel in God's hand. I just want us to know that it is God's hand not man's hand. Am I right? We are praying God that he will use his hand and make us useful in his hand. Praise the Lord. Right from beginning, it has been the plan of God to use woman, a vessel useful in his hand. Let's look at the beginning. From Genesis 2.18. And the Lord God said, It is not good that the man should be alone. And we make him and help meet for him. In the book of Proverbs 18.22, the Bible says, He who findeth a wife does what? And obtain what? In God's hand. Hallelujah. So we notice that right from the mind of God, from the beginning, God has been interested in woman. And the interest of God in woman is to make us useful. Useful. Immediately he created us, he gave us an assignment. A help. Meet. I pray that we will realize our usefulness today in the mighty name of Jesus. I also want us to know that if you don't make your allow God hand to make you useful, 
another hand will use you. Are you getting me? If God's hand will not use you, another hand is there to use you. And so you have a choice to make. Either you prefer the hand of the Lord or another hand. Hallelujah. We want to know that since it is in the mind of the Lord for God to use woman, the devil knew this and he was battling and frowning at it. And he fought so that woman will not be useful. When we look at the pronouncement that was made in Genesis 2, Satan in his subtlety and, and cunningness and wickedness, not wanting a woman to be useful, came and attacked the woman. Is that not so? He attacked the woman. And when he attacked the woman, sin came in. And he took opportunity of the hand that's supposed to be used of God, the woman that's supposed to be used of God by the hand of God, and lay hand, lay hold of the woman, and begin to use the woman. And Satan, in his wickedness, subject women to slavery. And if you look at the pronouncement the Lord made in Genesis chapter 3, he said, verse 16, unto the woman he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception. In sorrow thou shalt bring forth children, and thy desire shall be to thy husband and he shall rule over thee. Do you observe that when we are talking of troubles, even in the church, in our nation, women are the majority. Am I right? When you talk of prayer houses, prayer houses, it's women. Praise the Lord. And I see that the enemy is using a means of capturing us. You know, in my house in Jikui, one man came. I was, I was going to work. I just drove out to go to work. And I saw one man well-dressed. And they were coming to measure uh, my backyard. So I was looking at them. So they were saying they want to open a church. I was just watching them. And the man picked interest in me. He didn't know me. He didn't know my name. But he picked interest in me and said, Woman, I can see that you are a deeper life. I laughed. And he said, We are trying to open a church. I can see that the way you look, you are looking a deeper life. And so I will make you one of my leaders. I laughed. I laughed. I left him alone. Praise the Lord. It's like pastors take pleasure in capturing us. They take pleasure in gathering us. When you want to talk of offering, women, we are very good in giving offering. And the man of God will paint it onto you like this. You will run and empty your bank account and pour it at the altar. The Lord will deliver us in Jesus' name. Satan laid hold on a woman. He reversed this statement. But we are believing God that by Saturday, everything will work well for us. In the name of Jesus. A woman, woman, a useful vessel in God's hand. Woman, a useful vessel in God's hand. I want us to know that word, in God's hand. We want to believe God 
that he will lay his hand upon us and do what we have not been able to do before in the mighty name of Jesus. He says something in that same book of Genesis. The problem of woman is, is too much. Hi. He said in sorrow, we will do what? And everything around women, sorrow, sorrow, sorrow. Even when you give back, the enemy still adds sorrow unto it. You see women, that the husband ran away because he has four girls. Who put the four girls inside the woman? Is the man, it's what to put that I produce. And yet, the man ran away and said, I am tired. How can you be producing guests in my house? That's the hand of the devil. He subjects us to rigorous slavery. You are doing your best to make sure you satisfy your husband. But he will never look at you. He will always want to look outside. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. But this same God, he made a solution. He made a solution. I see God full of mercy. He said, look at it in verse 15. Genesis 3. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman. And between thy seed and her seed, it sh shall be bruised. The seed, her seed, it shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. Prophecy over the woman. Me, I see the mercy of God. When he said, let me punish this woman, he said, no. Let me show her mercy. Then he spoke ahead. That this same woman know that you are, you are, you are, you, you are useless in. This same woman that you are calling an entity. This same woman that is a slave. <laughs> she is going to bear a seed. Hallelujah. That will push your head. But unfortunately, Satan has not allowed our eyes to be open. That you have been made, you have been made, you have been made. God has made you to bruise the head of Satan. I see several of us. What to do? When Satan comes to our like this, you want to bruise the tail. And when you bruise the tail, of the Satan, what we have to, to serpent, what happened? You come back and bite you. You are scratching serpent like this. You are toiling with serpent. We are going to pray that the Lord hands will come upon us, and we will be able, to, we will not miss our targets, because the pronouncement was the head. Do you know why the head? It is where he calculates his evil. You know what head is meant for. So why, if you don't break it, you will continue being a subjected unto his power. So you are going to be praying silently in your heart. Teach me eh, how to bruise the head of Satan. Even in the Old Testament, we saw women that the Lord used and they did not miss their targets. Today, the Lord will help us and we will not miss our targets in the name of Jesus. We will, we will briefly look at some women in the Bible that the Lord used to fulfill prophecy. Hallelujah. Let's go to the book of 2 Samuel 20. 
we want to see a woman, how God's hand came upon this woman. 2 Samuel chapter 21 to 2. In the beginning of this chapter, the Bible said there was a man called Sheba. And the way they describe Sheba, they said he was a son of Belial. Another scripture said, another version said, a troublemaker. Sheba was a thug. You know what thugs are made of? Have you ever seen thugs? You are in Abuja now. You know, politicians are here. You know you have thugs around you that are fighting on your behalf. Thugs! No man could tame Sheba. He went and faced the king, the king that the Lord himself, the hand of the Lord himself has made, David, and said, you are going to rule Israel. But Satan rose up Sheba and said, far be it. David must not rule us. We have nothing to do with David. And you could see men David said, if you don't do something, this one will be more than, than Absalom. Oh, let's do something. And so, they begin, men, men of war, soldiers with their, with their gun, they begin to pursue Sheba. Nobody was able to catch Sheba. Talks that the enemy himself is driving. And when Sheba escaped, and enter a city, world. <laughs> Do you know what the men were doing? They started beating the wall. They are look, using, wasting their strength to make sure that they caterpillar the wall. They were just using digger. This wall must come down. We must get Sheba today. When you scratch the tail of the serpent, he will come back and bite you. Thank God that Sheba didn't didn't come back through the top, uh, top of the wall and throw gun on their head. But here is a woman like you. She came out because the hand of the Lord was upon that woman. Hallelujah. The woman has been there for many years. Nobody knows her. What we are talking about today in this weekend, what we are talking about is not that we are raising you to go and be um, opening a uh, uh, ministry and you put a uh, prayer warrior international Abuja you know that's why some of us well, that's what some of us does is we are not God is not raising us up as reverend doctor missus that's not what we are talking about the Lord will lay his hand upon you in silence and he will create an occasion Hallelujah. He will create an occasion where he will use you. And when he will use you, you will strike once. The men were struggling to kill Sheba. The woman just came quietly and called Joab and said, Come, why are you doing this now? Why you want to destroy? Do you know the way the woman described herself? It's my interest. We are talking about the hand of the Lord upon a woman. When you see a woman that is used of God, there must be a hand upon that woman. Now look at verse 19. I am one of them that are peaceable and faithful in Israel. And a mother in Israel. Why will thou swallow up the inheritance of the Lord? She they introduced herself. That's what we are talking about. Oh. That is what we are talking about. God does not use women that are like this. And you know, even those women, their power is not of the Lord. Oh. There is somewhere they used to go and collect and rob. Some of their perfume are diluted. And they want to intimidate everybody. What do you want to do? What do you want to do? I want to show you. 
I'm a woman. No. But there is something God did in the life of this woman. And he said, I am one of them. That's visible. She's a woman of peace. And I tell you women, it takes a woman of peace. A woman that is free from sin. Ha, that we brush the head of serpents. It takes a woman of peace that will be a useful instrument in the hands of the Lord. You started prayer ministry and people come to pray and yet their problem is not solved. Why is it that their problem is not solved? You will bring post and say, lame we see. There is, there is some name that is raining in Abuja now. I don't want to call their name, but they call them Mama. They will first of all put Mama, Mama something. Mama, and they will put poster, Mama, Mama. People will go say, lame we walk. Eh, um, blind we see. Me, I've never seen lame, koro, koro like this, physical. Have you seen it? I'm still praying, I say, God, I know you have power. And I know that you are able to raise the dead. I know that you are able to make the blind see. But I'm here to see. Even with all this one that they are showing on television. I'm here to see. I have not seen it until I see Koro Koro before I know. Praise the Lord. Even the one we are seeing, that is something. The Lord will deliver us in the name of Jesus. But I want to tell you that the God, he is going to raise silent women among us. Say amen. amen. He will raise silent women. Nobody will know them. Do you know that there are leaders in that city, but they didn't come to make peace with Joab. I, I, I don't know how they were doing. Hey, oh. And this woman just quietly talked. And the Lord's hand brought an extraordinary wisdom upon her. And she began to speak with wisdom. And Joab melt. I said, God forbid. I have nothing to do with this city. I don't want to kill anybody. Just Sheba. It is that talk. That talk. And so the Bible says, she went in her wisdom and spoke and they throw the head of Thor mm, Sheba onto them and there was peace you know what we are facing in our nation is that not so we want to believe God that we will be the answer in the mighty name of Jesus that he will walk upon us in our closets we don't need posters we don't need television we don't need it Television show has not helped us. We need silent neighbor, silent hand in your corner, inside your bedroom. But the day God wants to make use of you like this, you just will say, who knows this woman? Who is this woman now? That's what I'm praying for my life. I don't know about you. Praise the Lord. Let's see another woman. God's hand upon Jahel. We see the hand of the Lord again in a woman like you do you notice that when sin prevailed in the land of Israel the Lord turned his back and they were under torment of Jabin they were under the torment and the leaders of Israel could not do anything until Deborah arose. The Lord's hand was upon Deborah somewhere. Deborah is just in a corner of his house. He will just sit under the palm tree and he will be, she will pray. People will come and be, he will be judging people. And later the Lord said, use her to pronounce victory over the children of Israel. And you could see that they were pursuing and pursuing and pursuing. And this Jabin, again, 
enter into a woman's hand. Look, if you allow yourself to be used, he will arrange victory for you like this. They will walk to your doorstep. You don't need an, any announcements. The Lord will just arrange it. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. And as the man came and he was panting, give me water, give me water, give me water. I'm thirsty. And you know, the Lord hand upon this woman, Jahel. Not only, it has not been on the pulpit though. We have not seen it on the pulpit. She has never preached any message. But she knows how, she knows hospitality very well. Are you getting my point? She know when somebody is, when her husband is feeling cold, eh? She know the, the, the kind of spices she will mix and the cold will just disappear. You know, when somebody has not slept for long, she won't go for drug. She knows the kind of kindirimu she will do. Eh? And she will just give you, you will sleep and forget yourself. It is the hand of the Lord. Even in the kitchen, you need the hand of the Lord. Though. <laughs> Are you getting me? Every area of your life, you need the hands of the Lord. Several of you, you are good cooks, but it's not acceptable because it is not the hand of the Lord. And so when this man came, I was saying, I am thirsty. <sighs> Give me water. Give me water. She just said, okay, don't worry. You want water? Okay. And she made a thick, thick milk and gave him to drink. And she, the man drank and slept off. And because this pronouncement must come to pass, eh? The seed of the woman must do what? Push the head off. She knew it. And God, she's been expecting the day God will use her to fulfill prophecy. And so, she, she, when she has noticed that this man has slept, she carry a nail, a peg. I don't know, a woman, a woman who, it takes the hand of the Lord. How can a woman eh, nail somebody on the head and the thing will stick onto the ground if not the hand of the Lord? A woman, useful vessel in God's something that if it is God's hand, little thing like this will work. And I noticed that this woman did not miss her targets. Are you getting me? What would have happened if she nailed on the leg like this? Would the man die? The man would say, hey, so you want to kill me? Before you kill me, I will kill you. Wah! She understood where to nail it. Where did she learn this wisdom? From God. Several of you, you run around too much and you think it is from the pulpit. You will learn. And what the devil has done to our pulpit we are not gaining anything again in the, on the, from the pulpit. All they are teaching us is how to make it. Just make it. You know, I was watching one, uh, one, one case in, a, in, a, in DBN. I was just shedding tears. And the man sat with the wife. I don't know if the, is the wife, but they called the wife. He was calling Mama. Mama. Oh, yeah, phone, phone to Mama. And people were phony. And as they are phony, phony, he would say, just bring your prayer request. And people were phony. You are phony. God will stop it. We will chase them out of this. They will not make market again in Abuja. People were phony. I say, can you phone now? Phone now. People were phone and say, hi. And they say their own major work is for bar, uh, uh, barrenness, eh, 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 miscarriages, anything that is common with women. That was what they were advertising. They say miscarriages, barrenness, eh, everything 
issue of blood. He, I was just watching like this, and tears were coming. And when the phone, they say, the man will just pray and say, hand over to mama now. And mama will just pray one minute, one, minute, one second prayers. And when he says, shout hallelujah five times. And the person receiving phone will shout the hallelujah. Say, okay, it's finished, it's finished. Foolishness. Foolishness. If you are here, it is the Lord that brought you here. Are you getting me? We have many women in this city, but God chose you to come. It is because he has interest in your life. He wants to lay his hand upon you so that you'll be a woman of difference. And if you are the type that is phoning on television, stop it. There is no road there. There is no road there. Where does Jahel gain the power to hit the enemy on the head? And once or so not twice, once, what? And the enemy died. You, when I see women going to prayer houses and they will, they will list prayer points for you and say, in the midnight, just pray like this and say, this one, enemy of my life, you will fall down and die. You, are, you don't know what you are doing. You are, you are scratching the tail of the enemy and it will beat you more and more. And that's why there is no solution. We want to beg God that he will teach us wisdom. He will carry us into where he makes other women of old. Are you getting me? Lord, take me to where you made Deborah. Take me to where you made Jahel. Take me inside where you made this woman. So that I will hit once. The Lord will take us there in Jesus' name. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. I know that the Lord has come to help us. I'm happy because the Lord has come to help us. For me, oh, he has come to help me. I don't know about you. Once, I don't want to miss target again. We have been missing the target. The Lord will help us. Now I said, if it's not God's hand, it's another hand. Do you agree with me now? If God will not put his hand upon you, automatically devil will put his hand upon you. You can't escape. Either you like it or not, you cannot. We want to see a case study of two women in the Bible. One that works with God's hand and the one with devil's hand. Hallelujah. We are going back to Esther again. Yesterday, God took us to Esther. Is that not so? The Lord is interested in us. And so we are not leaving this Esther until he has finished dealing with us. Go with me to the book of Esther. You all know the story of Esther. Is that not so? Now, Esther again. The book of Esther. Because you know the story, we will be picking it. Yesterday we have had enough concerning Esther, but the Lord is taking us back again. Esther chapter 2, verse 17. For now, just read verse 17 for me. Now let me read King James. And the king loved Esther above all the women, and she obtained grace and favor in his sight more than all the virgins, so that he set the royal crown upon her head and made her queen instead of Vasti. Yesterday, the Lord took us to the story of Vasti. We are not talking about Vasti now. But I want to tell you today that it is the love of God eh? I brought you here. Are you getting me? You are not here by mistake. It is the law. Some of you, you came, you didn't intend to sleep. But something is making you say, ah, I can't go. I want to sleep. Is that not so? It is the love of God. Hi. I am a faithful child. Oh. It is the favor of God eh, that brought you here. 
it is not by power, nor by might, but by my spirit, says the Lord. He said, Esther found grace. He found favor before the king. The hand of the Lord makes a difference. Why Esther? Among other virgins, why Esther? Among other women, why me? Do you know your neighbor is not here? Your neighbor is not here. Some of you, your church members are not here. Is that not so? Why me? Lord, why did you bring me here? I see your call to you one day and say, God, why did you bring me to Abuja? I've been asking that question several times. And I begin to cry before the Lord. Since I gave my life to Jesus, Lord, why did why Abuja? Why did you bring me to Abuja? Several of you, you don't know that it was the Lord, the hand of the Lord that brought you here. It is the hand of the Lord that located you in Abuja. You know, Esther is not a native of that land. Is that not so? How many of you are born and bred in Abuja? You are a native of Abuja, Federal Capital Territory. Raise up your hands. Few. All of us, we are, we are strangers in this land. Is that not so? But... When I listen to your language, a man of God preached on the pulpit to my hearing and say, you have not come to look at Asso Rock. We will make it. And say, everybody, tell your neighbor you will make it. You will not, you will not come and look at Asso Rock. You will make it. What have you come to make in Abuja? Something happened to Esther. Esther had an origin. She came from somewhere. And when you look at the story of Esther, the way we were taught yesterday, the way she was brought up, you know she was an orphan. Is that not so? She was brought up an orphan. She never had, she never enjoyed her parents. Esther, I don't know how Mordecai's wife treated her. But Mordecai's eyes was upon Esther. It seems to me the Lord has addressed Mordecai and said, This is an instrument in my hand. Take care. Amen. We notice that. Esther, he said, he was, he was, she was from another land. And she came to dwell in another land. She never dreamt of becoming a queen one day. Nobody told her that she would become a queen one day. But the hand of the Lord made her a queen. Hallelujah. What am I trying to say? I want to look back. Sometimes, if I travel home to my village and I see some of my friends that we grew up together, the way they are still wallowing in sin, some of them, they could not finish their school. They got pregnant. Eh? And they, they, are, they are just, they are just, they will, be, they will be begging you, what did you bring now? What did you bring? What did you bring for us? And when I come back, I say, God, what did you see in me? Like, you show me mercy. You show me mercy. You came and hide me here. To bless my life. I didn't merit it. Do you notice that Esther, where she was brought up, she used grinding stone to grind pepper. She doesn't know what they call blender. Several of you now, the way you are behaving, God will deliver you. 
You don't know what, some, your children doesn't even know grinding stone again. Blender. Thank God for Nepa. Hallelujah. Esther came somewhere. The Lord brought her out from a, merry, a lowly life, a merry clay, and set her up as a queen overnight. Hallelujah. And I'm seeing us in the shoe of Esther. We, have not, we are not here to cajole you and say, you are going to be a queen. Say, hallelujah, Sandra, I'm a queen. You know, that's why, they, that's how they, they tease us. Say, I'm a queen. In Jesus' name, I'm a queen. Either you like it or I'm a queen. That's not what we are talking about. Hallelujah. How can an ordinary girl like this, fatherless girl, turn out to become a first lady? It is the hand of the Lord. Are you getting my point? And when I'm saying the hand of the Lord, don't begin to salivate as rock and say one day my husband will become a president. That's not what we are talking about. What we are talking about is greater, mightier than an earthly king. He is raising up queens for the king of kings. Hallelujah. And you are that queen. Esther. Ordinary Esther. I want to remind you all how you came. We have many directors among us here. Silently, you are sitting quietly now. But I want you to know, if anybody tell you when you were in primary school that you become a director, will you believe? We have many big officers among us. If anybody said today, you become a minister's wife, will you ever believe? That's what we are talking about. Now, just see yourself. And say it is the mercy of God. And you must not misuse that mercy. You must not misuse that mercy. Esther, the Lord rose her up overnight. And she assumed her position. Before you leave this place, the Lord will show you your duty. Where you will assume, and you will, you, will, you will assume your position as a woman useful in God's hand in the name of Jesus. We are going to read again the story of Esther. Let's see. First thing that Esther did when she became the first lady. Let's look at verse 21 to 23. I will read it. Just listen while I read. And follow me. Verse 21 to 23. In those days, while Mordecai sat in the king's gate, two of the king's chamberlains, Bintan and Teres, of those which kept the door, were wrought and sought to lay hand on the king Ahasuerus. And the thing was known to Mordecai, who told it unto Esther, the queen. And Esther certified the king thereof in Mordecai's name. And when inquisition was made of the matter, it was found out thereof they were both hanged on a tree. And it was written in the book of the Chronicles before the king. You must make record wherever you are located. Do you know the first thing? Esther could not condone iniquity and wickedness. Why she was made the queen? She, the first assignment 
spiritual assignment that God gave to her was to expose iniquity. And you are here, August's wife. You just allow iniquity. And when, they, when your husband is bringing so many iniquities in the name of thieves, Naira, you will change your car. Every time you are changing your car like a chameleon, changing your rapper, you are happy. Say, oh God, I thank you. You could not call your husband. Where did you get this money? My husband, oh, remember, oh, we are children of God. Oh, be careful. Oh. You can't hear it in your mouth. But Esther, she exposed iniquity. May the Lord help you to expose iniquity wherever you are found. We also saw in chapter 4 something that Esther did. Chapter 4, I will read verse 1 to several verse. When Mordecai perceived all that was done, Mordecai rent his clothes and put on sackcloth with ashes and went out into the midst of the city and cried with a loud and a bitter cry and came even before the king's gate for none might enter into the king's gate clothed with sackcloth and in every province whatsoever the king's commandment and his decree came there was a great mourning among the jews and fasting and weeping and wailing and many lay in sackcloth and ashes so Esther's mates and her chamberlains came and told it her. They, then was the queen exceedingly grieved, and she sent raiment to clothe Mordecai and to take away his sackcloth from him, but he received it not. Then call Esther for Hattach, one of the king's chamberlains, whom he had appointed upon her and gave him a commandment to Mordecai to know what it was and when it was. So Arch went forth to Mordecai onto the streets, the city, which was before the king's gate. And Mordecai told him of all the, that happened unto him and the sum of money that Ammon had promised to pay to the king's treasury for the Jews destroy him. Then also he gave him the copy of the writing of the decree that was given at Shushan to destroy them, to show it unto Esther and to declare it unto her and to change her that she could go in unto the king to make, to charge her to go in unto the king to make supplication unto him and to make requests before her people. And Atach came and told Esther and the word of Mordecai. And again, Esther spoke unto Atach and gave him commandment unto Mordecai. And all the king's servants and the people of the king's province do know that whosoever, whether man or woman, shall come unto the king, unto the inner court, who is not called, there is one law of his to put him to death, except such to whom the king shall hold out the golden scepter, that he may live but have not been called to come in unto the king these 30 days. And they told Mordecai Esther's word. Then Mordecai commanded to answer Esther, Think not with thyself that thou shalt escape in the king's house more than all the Jews. For if thou altogether orders thy peace at this time, then shall their enlargement and deliverance arise to the Jews from another place. But thou and thy father's house shall be destroyed. And who know whether thou art come to the kingdom for such a time as this? Then Esther bade them return to Mordecai this answer. Go, gather together all the Jews that are present in Shushan and fast ye for me. And neither eat nor drink. There are three days, night or day. I also and my maidens we fast likewise and so will I go in 
to the king, which is not according to the law. And if I perish, I perish. And Mordecai went his way and did according to all that Esther had commanded him. Praise the Lord. I decided to read all because of our time. There is a matter here. We know that mercy, favor of God, brought Esther overnight to become the queen. And as he became the queen, look, let me tell you something today. Every position you find yourself, eh, it is for a purpose. Are you getting me? It is for a purpose. I am praying God. I want to know why you made me to be a wife of my husband. It is for a purpose. Esther, when she entered into palace, you know that her origin was different. She, you know, she saw she cannot carry anything. If she carry plates, he and mates, ma mates, many things, many body, she can't carry anything. They will always carry for her. She saw strange things in the palace that she, she's not used to. Are you getting my point? The kind of meat Esther was eating in the palace, though. Every day, chicken, chicken, fresh fish. And the clothing that was kept for Esther. She became carried away. And she forgot. She did not realize. Why did you brought me here? I don't deserve to be here. That should be your prayer every day. Oh. If, you are a, if you are a leader somewhere, this should be your prayer every day. Do you notice that? Immediately calamity started and it's for this purpose the law posted Esther but Esther did not know and the way I fear God he will not tell you when he's introducing that brother to you he will not tell you this is why I want you to marry this man I was fasting and praying I said God why I don't I can't marry a thief man I want somebody from my village no no they even wrote a will for me my father wrote a will before he died and said must be from Yagba land. Kogi said, if not, and the Lord appeared to me and said, you are marrying this man. I am the Lord your God. I have an assignment for you. Have you ever asked God, why am I a wife of my husband? You set a target for yourself. You cannot achieve purpose of God. Hallelujah. When Esther climbed the ladder of a queen, she was carried away. <laughs> Do you know that this Abuja is very delicate for Christians? You can be easily carried away. Is that not so? Even in the church, the kind of competition on clothes that we find in the church The kind of delicacies, some of you, you don't, you don't, say, oh God, God will help us in Jesus' name. Lower your level, lower, low down, let God work on you. Esther, when she had the calamity of the Jews, her people, and they send the message, say, to, go and tell your husband, though. go and tell your husband, though. This is what is happening to us. So, and all the Jews, they were on sackcloth. They were not dressing well. And they were fasting. They were not eating. But Esther was busy eating. Before he finished uh, 
uh, fried rice. There is five alive beside. She will eat and eat and eat. And when they, when they sent the message, the first thing that will come to the heart of Esther when she heard the news was to go and pack clothes. Clothes. Go and give with the guy. Ah, he must, he's forbidden. How can? Ah, I have a lot of clothes. Clothes. Do you know that what God is demanding from us is beyond clothes? It's beyond fashion. Hey, guy, women in the church, when I see the way you dress, you make poor women intimidated. One day, I went somewhere just by chance, and they were doing Thanksgiving. I just dressed casually. And they say women should dance out, come and do Thanksgiving. Come and see competition of laces. So one voice was saying, ah, you didn't dress well. You can't dance with them. Oh. Then I remember the man that is inside of me. The man I carry is greater than clothes. Is greater than lace. So I dance. I dance to Jesus. And I went and gave my offering. Nobody will query me. Hallelujah. But why we find ourselves now? Clothes. Look at your wardrobe. You must dismantle those clothes. Your wardrobe. I see some women. If there is any wedding, they must buy clothes for that wedding and shoe to match. If there is ten wedding, you must go ten times to the market and shoe to match and back to match. That is the problem of Abuja women. Esther fell a victim. Thank God for Mordecai that reminded her of her origin. She packed clothes, packed clothes, packed clothes, take clothes, take clothes. We don't need your clothes. The purpose why God brought to make you a Christian is not to show clothes. Enough of showing clothes. We are tired of seeing clothes. God will turn those clothes to rags if you don't repent. She packed clothes. Take clothes. Yeah, nobody must be naked. Ah, I mean, I mean, I'm the first lady now. I shall not be answered. Hey, take clothes. The man of God said, No, no be clothes. It's not a matter of clothes. Do you notice our our women fellowship? Everything is clothes. Uniform. 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 We don't hear sound messages. Some of you, we have been begging your church. We want to show film. You say, we don't have time. We don't have time. No time. No time. But you have time for uniform. You have time for cooking. They will be teaching how to make dodo. Inside, inside women fellowship. There was a church. We went. And we wanted, we have come to bring our, they came and drove us. I said, we, there is, we want to do something crucial now. What is that crucial? You know it now. They drove us away. Oh. Say, oh, yeah, 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 no, we don't, all of us are not peace house. Not all of us are peace house. Eh? So we pack our kaya and left. There is nothing happening again in the church more than fashions. Do you know, even the dressing we find ourselves in the church among women, you can't say it all. What has happened that ladies no longer cover their heads in the church. Where did we borrow this culture from? It just goes, uh, praise the Lord somebody. Hey, hey, hey. Oh, that is not why you are born again. That is not why God called you. And that is not why God made you a woman. I don't want that right on. Listen to the word of God. Listen to the word of God. And pray. If you are taught, pray. We are not of them that collect applause on the pulpit. Do you notice that we have brought evil cultures in the church? In those days, men tremble at the word of God. They cry. They say, what shall we do? But do you know what is happening? I went to preach somewhere. And uh, as I was preaching, and the thing touched the man. 
he came and put offering at my feet. That you are doing it in your church now. You say yes. Yes, right on. And put offering. You want to buy the word of God with money. You will perish with your money. Except to repent. Abuja women. The Lord has called you. You, all of you here. To do something in your life. And after this meeting, there must be a difference. There must be a difference. We are tired. We are tired. There is nothing happening. Everybody wants to come to Abuja. I invited one of my friends from Kaduna to attend this meeting. And they visited a pastor that they started together. And they met the pastor with a big, flashy car. And the man is planning now to become a bishop. And the man said, I cannot, I cannot remain like this. I've toyed too much. I must make it. So he went and enrolled in the list of bishopric. I don't know. Why must you be, it, it should be your offering that they will use to be, you, you, you don't have to. The little you have, you go and give them. They will use it to build mansion. And you, you are living in one bedroom flat. You are not giving to God. If we stop, they will stop. That's why we are saying, if you can stop, if you repent, the pulpit will repent also. They will, when they don't see money, they will go back to God and cry. Are you getting my point? Esther forgot. And she carry clothes. Take clothes. Take clothes. Take clothes. Enough of fashion in the church. Enough. 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 Do you know you cannot wear more than one dress in a day? Do you get me? If you see me putting another regal on top of you, what do you call me? Why do you have up to 100? Uncountable. The Lord will deliver us in Jesus' name. I noticed that several of us, when the Lord put you where he placed you, your belly, you were not as fat as this before. We don't know how to manage you. You just begin to develop what belly. Chicken, five for life. Everything, five for life. That thing is not alive, oh. There is nothing alive inside five for life. It's poison. There is poison inside five for life. I'm not spoiling your market if you are selling five for life. Why must it, it be? It must always go with your and chicken, fresh fish. You will just carry how many meat at a time? Only you. And you say we are enjoying ourselves. The Lord will deliver us in Jesus' name. You are forgotten why God posted you to Abuja. You are forgotten. You are forgotten. The Lord will help us in the name of Jesus. Esther forgot. She forgot. And the Lord used Mordecai to remind her. Do you know that Mordecai even said, he said, do you know, who knows if it is this purpose? Because all things work together for good to them that do what? So it's like, it's done on her. See, it's true. And I remember where I come from. I remember I'm in you. Hi. And I said, okay. Okay, I know what to do. Go and gather all the Jews. Let them fast and pray with me. Do you know that we have lost fasting and prayer in our own days now? Let them fast and pray with me for three days. And I also will fast and pray. If I perish, I...